All right, we are going to make our last function for chapter 7, and that is parabmin. So we're going to use parabolic interpolation to um, try and help us minimize functions. But this is going to be kind of built off of um, our Goldman script. So you can see up here, a lot of this looks like it, it's from our Goldman script because it actually is. Um, but do note, parabmin is the name of the function, and that's the name of the file. Okay. Um, our outputs, x will be the location where the minimum occurs, and I should say x location. This would be the y location of the minimum. Um, and then we have, of course, our relative error and number of iterations. And then on the input side, we have our function g, we have our x lower, um, we have our estimation of the root, and our x upper, um, desired relative error, maximum number of iterations, and then var argon to allow for some extra inputs if g um, is a multivariable function. All right, so let's go down here a ways. I'm going to skip over some of these extra comments I've added for now. Um, just so that we can get right into um, writing our code for this. Okay, so let's go ahead and just start off by pointing out one thing that we're going to have to do here eventually. Um, and we're going to point it out for two reasons. Okay? So you might remember this is our formula here. This long thing this is our formula for computing x4, a, a fourth x value on our number line, right? Because we'll have an x1, an x2, an x3, and then an x4, which is the location of the vertex of the parabola that we create. Okay. But note that there's a lot of f's in here. Okay? And whenever we had our function pop up before, we had to do f, um, the variable, comma var argon and we don't want to have to type in var argon that many times so one thing that we can do here is we can just right off the bat we'll say uh, f is equal to okay, some function of x okay, and then we'll, we'll just say it's g okay, and then uh, of x comma var argon And we'll go ahead and we'll suppress that. All right. And then next, um, the next thing we want to do is we would like to rewrite this XL, XR, XU in the language that we were using here, right? Which is X1s, X2s, X3s. Okay. Well, and... Unfortunately, we already have an X in our code. That's going to be the output here in the very end. So rather than me saying X1, X2, X3, I think I'm going to make it Y1, Y2, Y3. And let's see how we're going to do that. So we'll go ahead here and we'll say that that X, um, actually I'm going to write Y of 1. So the first entry of some vector y is just going to equal our x lower. And then the second entry will be xr. And the third entry will be x upper. Let's just put these all on one line. All right, now let's see, what next? Um, we're going to, before our while loop starts, um, we would like to start counting the iterations. So when we say iter is equal to zero. Okay. And then one other thing, we are going to need to eventually put something in this location here. Let's just leave ourselves with a little spot there. Okay. 
but we'll we'll put it there when it when it's needed okay so the next thing that I'd like us to do okay is type in that crazy formula that we saw um, in OneNote. So I'm going to see if I can split my screen here real quick. All right, I have my, my screen split here now, and you can see we have the formula that we need in our while loop right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and we will start our while loop. And remember, we just we're using y's instead of x's because x is going to be the name of the location of our minimum okay so i'm going to say y of four is equal to um, y of two minus one half or 0.5 times okay? and why don't we create our fraction here right off the get-go. Okay, I just have parentheses around what will be the numerator and what will be the denominator. Okay. And then we're going to need parentheses around the first thing because we're going to be squaring this. And it should be y of 2 minus y of 1. Okay, And let's see what we have next. So after doing y of 2 minus y of 1 squared, we should have times, okay? we should have times, and then in parentheses, we should have f of y of 2 oops, minus f of, I'm going to need to scoot this over a little bit. And actually, is what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type all this in. I'm going to pause this real quick so we don't spend too much time on it. All right, it is all typed in now. Let's take a look. There it is. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next line here. So there will be some more stuff that, that we'll fill in here. But I'd like to point out kind of what we want to do next. And that is we now have a number line. Okay, and we're using, again, y1, y2, y3, y4. But if we were thinking about our picture over here from yesterday, we saw that is what we'd really like to do. Actually, I have it written here somewhere. There we go. So what we'd like to do is take our y1, y2, y3, y4, and put them in order. Okay, So that way, x1 star is equal to x1, x2 star is equal to x4, x3 star is equal to x2, and x4 star is equal to x3. At least in this picture we have here, that's how we would um, sort them, okay? In order from left to right, okay? So let's go ahead and, and we'll start that here on the next page. So we're gonna hit, um, we're gonna call it uh, y. So we're gonna say y equals sort of y. So this is what this means is we're going to take the four elements in y and we're going to reorder them in the output. We're going to call the same thing y because it's going to contain the same values. Okay? It's just they've been reordered. Okay. And then next, okay, we'd like to have some logic built in here um, so that we can decide what point to get rid of. Okay, and let's go look back and see what that logic was. So as what we had decided is if the smallest value happened at x1 or happened at x2, okay, then we were going to get rid of the far right point, x4. Okay. And we decided if the minimum occurs actually instead occurs instead at x3 or at x4 that we'd get rid of the far left point x1 okay. and that's just because like actually I'll, I'll, I'll say it in the one we were just looking at if the minimum happens at x4 okay, or x3 you can see then we know the minimum doesn't occur between x1 and x2 so that's why we're going to be chopping off x1 star there if 
the minimum occurs at x3 or x4. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and build this into here. So we're going to have if f of y, okay. so we're plugging, um, and I want to be specific here. Let's talk about the first one of these y values. So if the first one of these y values is equal to okay, the min of f of y, There we go. So this is taking the minimum of all of y1, y2, y3, y4 being plugged into the function. Okay. And here, y one's being plugged into the function. Okay. And so this is saying if f of y of 1 is the smallest, then we'll do something. Okay. But we want to do that same something. We want to do that same something if f of y of 2 is equal to the minimum. Okay. All right, and that something is, is that y is going to lose an element. Remember, we said we would want to lose the last one. So y is going to just be the first three elements. There we go. And we can go ahead and suppress that. And if it doesn't happen at one of the first two, the minimum, then the minimum is going to happen at the second two, and we'll get rid of the first element of y. So this would look like y of 2, y of 3, and y of 4. And then we can go ahead and end this. That's how we're going to, again, adjust um, our y1, y2, y3. And then the next thing here is if we've completed this process, we want to know that our number of iterations is going to go up. And then we, we need to build something in here to stop this. Okay, So we're going to need to, to think about how we want to do that. Okay. Well, let's write in maybe our error formula here first. Okay. And so that's why I was starting off with if is we're going to need to make sure as long as the denominator of our relative error is non-zero, we'll compute it. But if it's zero, we don't want to compute it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to use Z. So, and Let's use let's use an uppercase Z. So let's say Z two. Okay, so Z two is not equal to. So I need tilde and then equal. Okay, if it's not equal to zero, what do we do? Well, our relative error is going to be the absolute value of Z two minus Z one divided by z2. Okay. So z2 is the new approximation for the um, minimum, specifically the x value. And uh, z1 will be the old one. Okay. So is what we'd want to do is at the very beginning of our while loop, we'd want to each time assign z1, because this is the old one, to be equal to z2. Okay. That being said, we need to say what z1 is at some point here. So as soon as we update y of 4, okay, y of 4 is going to be our, I don't know, just do it like this. y4 is going to be the location of the x value for our our uh, minimum. This is our approximation for it. So we're going to have z uh, um, z oh, let's see, should I have had that the other way? We're going to have z2 yeah, z2 is the new one, z1 is the old one. So z2 is going to equal y of 4. Okay. Alright, 
right? And there's not a whole lot more we have left to add. The only other thing I'd say in regards to these Zs is that we're gonna need a Z2 to begin, okay? If we want it to actually be able to run through the first iteration of this while loop, we're gonna need to just pick something to be Z2, and you can just make that any of the Y values that you have there. Yeah. That's what these percent signs were here for, was adding that in here. There we go. All right, and I am gonna add in just a little bit more. So um, for our relative error, I would like to still multiply by 100 and then end this if statement. And also we'd like to break, we'd like to break this while loop if um, either of two things happen, one of which is if the relative error becomes less than or equal to um, our desired relative error, okay. or if the number of iterations are greater than or equal to what we set max it to be, okay. if either one of these things happen, we will break the while loop. Okay. And the very last end I just put in there was to end the while loop. And so all we have left to do is define a couple things. X was supposed to be our output. Okay? And remember, our updated root, okay, we are calling Z2. Okay? And I, I keep calling it a root. Our updated minimum is Z2. And our uh, Y value we should result from taking and plugging uh, x into our function or z2 either one all right and so all we have left to do with this thing is to test it out so i'm going to go ahead and hit uh, save up here okay. all right i've switched this back to our oscillating current example and maybe it's been a little while since we've looked at this and i want to show you all um, before we actually test out our parabmin function, um, that there's an easy way to plot a functions. Um, it's called easy plot. Okay. And is what we'll see here in a second is because you know it's doing some of the work here for us, this easy plot function. Um, that it's not going to give us the exact plot we want, but it'll be good enough that we can spot where the minimum is since we kind of already have an idea of what this looks like. Okay. So, um, you know, actually this says, uh, yeah, th if you remember, this says to find a maximum. And so is what we did is we just included this negative here. So the maximum we're looking for is actually a minimum now. Um, but yeah, and we wanted to plot this from, I think, zero to four. Okay, let's go ahead and test this out and see what we got going on. All right, so here, here's the uh, graph of the current. Okay, and in fact, it's flipped across the x-axis, right, because we have the negative in front. Okay, but we can see that this minimum, okay, which again is really a maximum, is occurring somewhere about at 0.25. Okay. So when we go to use our parab min function, okay, um, we'll put in our function. We'll need an x lower, how about 0.1? Um, then we think the, the root is somewhere about 0.2. And then um, how about 0.3 for the, the uh, upper end of that? Okay, so this is xl xr, x upper. Okay. All right, and then uh, I'm just using the defaults here. Let's go ahead and hit run just to see if we get any error functions because it's really easy to make a typo after you type in all that stuff. Okay. Right, we just typed in our parabmin function. Okay, and you can see down here it looks like I'm missing an equal sign, and the fact that it's telling me I need a double equal sign, it's telling me that this is happening probably in one of those if statements. Okay, So let's go back to Parabmin. And if we scroll up, we can actually see I am missing an equal sign here. 
I'm going to resave it. And then I'm going to go back to this oscillating current example and hit run. Okay. And we are being told not enough input arguments. Okay. And that's because we actually didn't build in uh, the, uh, the Nargan part of the function, which allows us to not input stuff there. So I'm going to need to actually input um, our ES and max it. And so how about we say, that looks like enough zeros to me. And how about 100 iterations, which would be plenty. Okay. There we go. Now it's happy. Okay. And maybe we'll go back in, we'll build in the, the Nargan part and maybe um, talk about the function a little bit more. Okay. But we can see it is working. It has given us um, the x value for where this minimum occurs. And if we wanted all the other information, actually you can see above here, I apparently did not suppress iter. And so that's why when I scroll up here, you can see all those iterations. Um, so we'll go back and we'll suppress that. Um, but I want you to also see that if we were to take this answer here and plug it into I, it should give us something close to, or it shouldn't give us something close to, to, to anything. It should give us the current that we're looking for, the maximum current. And because of the negative, I just need to go like that. There we go. There's our maximum current, about, about 7.09. All right, let's go ahead and switch back. So we are going to go back to Parabmin, and we are going to add in some more detail. Okay. So if you remember, we'd like if Nargan is less than, okay. let's see what we need at minimum. We need at minimum one, two, three, four inputs. So if somebody inputs less than four things, we need to tell them uh, to input more stuff. Okay. So air okay. at least four input arguments um, required. And if we have less than five input arguments, okay. um, remember, less than five input arguments, or if we choose to leave um, something empty, so is empty, okay. and we're talking about ES, that would be the, the fifth input argument. Okay. So if Nargan is less than five or um, ES is left empty, and is what we'll want to do is use some default. And let's make that our default for our relative error. We'll end this. Now that we've completed the Nargan portion of our code, let's talk about some other things that we could have built into our function. Okay. So the first one here would be an issue. What if y4 ends up being one of y1, y2, or y3. Okay. Well, that's going to cause us issues later on down the road when we need to figure out which interval to get rid of. Okay. Um, what interval we get rid of is reliant on the fact that these four numbers are different. Okay. Another thing we could have built in okay, is if, if our three points were on the same line, then it could be that the parabola we try to make could have a leading coefficient of zero, making it a, a line instead of a parabola, okay. which would be problematic. Okay. All right, and there is technically another thing we could even build in. We could build in um, something so that if we end up with division by zero, in computing y4, right? That would be bad. Okay. Um, but you will see in the problems that you'll be working on, you're not going to run into any of these issues. So we're not going to build those in there, but we definitely could.